A CLO is a collateralized loan obligation. It is a uh, investment vehicle whereby a pool of broadly syndicated loans, a diverse pool of loans, are securitized by an investment bank and the various tranches of debt are sold to uh, a subset of investors depending on their risk appetite. CLOs allow lenders to get term leverage to borrow from more senior lenders who are willing to accept lower potential returns and take less risk so that those lenders can magnify potentially their returns. So you could say CLOs are lending to lenders. CLOs have a waterfall approach to them. And by that, I mean that the highest ranking or highest rated part of the capital structure gets paid first. Uh, and then if there's money left over, it gets paid to the next ranking level of the capital structure and goes on all the way down to the equity uh, at the end. There's several parts to the creation of a CLO. So first, uh, CLOs are set up by arranging banks. So think the large money setter banks on, on Wall Street. And they'll work with a portfolio manager who uh, at an investment firm will uh, assemble a portfolio of loans. What does that portfolio look like? It is a very diverse portfolio of typically about 200 companies that you'd be very familiar with that are rated below investment grade. However, senior loans, corporate loans, also called bank loans, sit at the top of the capital structure. And so when there is a default, they go to bankruptcy court. Who gets paid back first? Loans. I get asked, who is a CLO for? But it's a trick question. CLOs have different tranches, and those different tranches are for different kinds of investors. So you could say CLOs are for lots of kinds of investors. The senior tranches are for more conservative investors, and the junior tranches are for more aggressive investors. So when we're looking at CLO debt tranches and the investors who purchase them, banks and insurance companies will stay at the top of the capital structure in AAA and AA and sometimes single A rated securities because they are safer. They have the highest quality in terms of credit rating by Moody's, S&P or Fitch. And then as you move down the capital structure, uh, there, there are specialized funds that are set up to invest in, in CLOs. Uh, hedge funds will invest in, in parts of the capital structure, uh, and then there are equity funds that will, uh, that will invest in, in the equity of CLOs or high net worth individuals. And so the investors in those funds are interested in a higher yield and they are therefore okay with a higher risk profile. So some of the benefits to a CLO include diversification in the underlying portfolio across industries and sectors, active management on the part of the CLO manager, potential enhanced yields versus comparable products in the market, structural benefits that protect the investors, particularly debt investors, when there is volatility in the greater market and perhaps defaults in the portfolio. CLOs are highly structured vehicles. And by that, I mean that there are um, not just structured in terms of the debt tranches that are issued, but there are generally rules associated um, with the CLO and, and tests to make sure that the collateral manager keeps, um, keeps to those rules. So for instance, uh, one of the tests is an interest coverage test. So the, the manager is tasked with making sure that the interest collected on the underlying assets is sufficient to pay the debt holders in the CLO structure. And so the CLO is going to act to protect itself when there is an increase in defaults in the portfolio or there's an increase in the downgrades of the underlying loans or the debt tranches. And if that happens, the structure will work to protect itself by diverting cash flow away from the equity and to the debt tranches, starting at the top of the capital structure. One of the major misconceptions about CLOs is that they're a source of instability or potential problems for the market. 
The reality is CLOs are term financing, which means CLOs lend for as long as the underlying loans are outstanding. CLOs will never have to sell. CLOs don't have margin calls. The format of the borrowing, the format of the leverage is actually very stable. There's no trigger within the CLO structure that will cause the asset manager to have to sell into a volatile market. Therefore, when there is a fall in asset prices, in this case, corporate loans, that's an opportunity for the asset manager during the reinvestment period to reinvest in loans at lower prices, all the while keeping intact the credit quality of the portfolio. Investors commonly conflate CLOs with CDOs or collateralized debt obligations. CDOs were common uh, before the great financial crisis and, and really are the uh, poster child for poor performance in uh, in structured vehicles during that time period. Uh, CDOs were created that were used to uh, finance subprime mortgages or Alt-A mortgages. If you think about those borrowers, those were very high loan-to-value mortgages against homes whose prices had recently appreciated quite a bit. And the underlying borrowers themselves had shaky income, very little financial history, not much in the way of assets beyond the home they were buying, Contrast that with a CLO. A CLO is backed by companies. Usually these are cash flow positive, EBITDA positive. These companies produce audited financials that can be monitored by professional investors like a CLO manager. And the companies themselves, their debt instruments, have ratings usually from one or two of the major rating agencies. In fact, uh, the losses on CLOs were less than 1%. Um, during what was you know, probably one of the most volatile times in, in recent financial history. Some of the risks that come with a CLO are default risk, downgrade risk, both in the assets and the liabilities, um, and volatility in the greater market. The CLO market has grown significantly over time, but the share of the loan market that's dominated by CLOs has grown as well. 40% of the loan market uh, was made up of CLOs a decade ago. Today, it's in excess of 70%. So with a structure like a CLO, where the managers are rating sensitive, uh, changes in ratings of the underlying loans in the market may create um, a little bit of a, a herd mentality in that maybe managers want to sell out of loans at the same time and it becomes a crowded trade, um, which can create a little more volatility in the market, in particular uh, where loans get downgraded. One of the risks of CLOs for the junior investor is you're taking a magnified or levered exposure to the underlying loans, which could result in magnified losses uh, for the most junior investor. For the more senior investors, the risks aren't really connected to magnified risks or even risk of loss, but illiquidity or the fact that the CLOs can be called in as soon as one or two years from their creation, called means paid back, or they can be extended for six, seven, eight years. So as a senior lender, you, you may have a position where you could get your money back very soon, or it could take a while for you to get your money back. And that might be a little difficult to handle if you have liabilities on the other side. We're talking about below investment grade securities in the underlying portfolio of a CLO. And below investment grade means higher risk. And therefore, the asset manager has to manage the risks of the underlying portfolio of each credit in each industry and the volatility in the market. And therefore, when you're avoiding defaults, but more importantly, avoiding losses, you maintain the integrity of the portfolio. So there've been quite a few developments in the CLO market over the last decade. Um, one, one of the, the biggest factors is the growth of the market. So in, in 2012, the CLO market was about 400 billion. Today, it's over a trillion dollar market. So it's become a much larger market, much more widely accepted uh, as an investment opportunity. While credit markets 
have changed in the last decade by becoming more uh, accommodating to borrowers and to private equity sponsors, the CLO market hasn't really moved so much in that direction. CLO structures have maintained their conservatism. The CLO market has changed over the last decade in becoming even higher quality uh, than we had pre-GFC. So there's increased enhancement or what we call par subordination beneath every CLO tranche. And what does that do? It gives those investors in those tranches more protection against defaults. There's been a little more regulation around CLOs over time. And uh, we think that that's probably healthy for the industry. One of the other changes that we've seen over the last 10 years is the investors in a CLO. And so the net of investors has broadened dramatically. We continue to see banks in the AAA tranche of a CLO, but we've seen more insurance companies, mostly U.S. insurance companies, come on board, learn about CLOs, and make them part of their investment process. We've seen many funds raised that are focused on structured credit, and these funds will go into the market, and they will invest in new issue CLO debt and secondary CLO debt because there's an active market for CLOs. Investors in CLOs should look at four major areas. First, the collateral manager, who chooses the loans that go into the CLO. Second, what is the underlying portfolio of loans in that CLO? Third, what is the structure? What are the enhancement levels? What are the tranching? How are the coverage tests set? And fourth, the documentation. For a CLO, you have an indenture and an offering memorandum, which lays out the rules and the limitations and the way the CLO is going to operate. There are lots of different metrics that uh, you can compare CLOs by. So depending on your level of risk and, and how you want to evaluate uh, a CLO, you know, those metrics may be more or less meaningful to you. Um, you know, it depends really on where you are in, in investing in the capital structure. A AAA investor may be most concerned about an increase of, of WARF in the portfolio. WARF meaning weighted average rating factor. So it's a, it's a numerical measure of uh, risk uh, based on the ratings of the underlying portfolio. Uh, and if you're an equity investor, maybe you're more concerned about the, the spread of the underlying portfolio uh, as that would uh, indicate how much income you're going to receive, uh, assuming the rest of the tranches you know, are paid their, their required interest. One of the things that, that investors should look for is manager performance uh, over time. Are you invested with an asset manager who has a long history of great performance managing credit, and more importantly, managing loans? And does that manager understand how to manage loans within a structure? As I'm fond of saying, you don't want to buy one CLO one day thinking you're, you're getting one flavor and, and then a different CLO from the same manager getting a different flavor, meaning a higher, higher amount of risk or a higher concentration uh, of the portfolio in certain industries. Uh, and so that's, those, those are some of the things that, that I think investors should look for.